carries their pensions. And for more on this development, let's speak with the Chief Executive Officer, Lit Network, Chukuma Kenwa. He joins us live from Abuja Studio. Good to have you join us. Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, several economic indicators have been put out there uh, by the National Bureau of Statistics, whether it's the um, inflation rate, uh, GDP growth rate, or even the unemployment rate. But when you look at all of these figures, um, what does that tell you about where we are um, in terms of our economy um, as we prepare for the transition on May the 29th? I would say that uh, when you gauge the economic health of Nigeria, uh, there is a lot more than uh, should be desired. Uh, the country at the moment, it's not healthy economically. Mm -hmm. Judging the high debt uh, profile of the nation, mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, the amount of money that we spend in subsidizing uh, the, uh, the refined uh, crude oil that we use, or the refined products from crude oil, is still very high. And uh, we know for the first part of the year, it stands at, at about 3.7 trillion. And if uh, subsidies that we removed by the end of the year, we must have spent um, over 6.7 trillion. Uh, that's quite much. Uh, so when you look at it, but I think, uh, like Mugazo uh, Konjiwala uh, uh, highlighted, advising governors, like a governor elect, to explore other options, especially. Judging from the fact that as long as Nigeria is concerned, there are two major sources of income for the states. You look about, you talk about the federal allocation and also the internally generated revenues. But we know that largely the economy of Nigeria is powered by informal sectors. The role of private businesses, SMEs, in you know strengthening the economy. But I think one of the major problems we have is access to funds by these SMEs that still stands at double digits. I mean, there is no way we can actually grow a double digit like she has recommended without incentivizing SMEs, then being able of, of business ideas to be funded. It's only when these small businesses are thriving that government can generate more revenues as an alternative to the federal locations. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about the, the statement that has been credited to the country director of the World Bank um, in, in Nigeria. He, he said that, look, Nigeria doesn't have a choice, that we must go to, to fund that 2023 budget deficit. He said, look, the deficit is about $10.7 trillion if, it, if you take, remove subsidy, for example, by June. But if you don't, then it ends up being about $12 trillion. Which means that one of the big issues on the table of the president elect uh, would be look, where do we find the money? And, that, and that's the question I'm asking you. Where exactly uh, does he and his team, where, would they, where should they be looking, looking at you know, to find the money? Three ways. Because if you ask me, uh, I, I would say that yes, over time it's become a cliche in Nigeria diversify the economy. I mean me to say that the economy is already diversified. All we now need to do is to incentivize other non-oil sectors to operate maximally. Because when you talk about internal generated revenues, we are not going to introduce that. There's already a structure for that, but we are talking about it performing optimally. So when you talk about where the president-elect can get the money to develop Nigeria, what will be to check the wastages? There's a lot of oil theft that is going on there in Nigeria. So we need to contain those wastages. But in terms of, uh, 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 like, oil bunkering, we lose both the recruit and the refined product. When it comes into Nigeria, like, there are a lot of reports to the fact that some of those things are sold illegally. So if, we, if the, the president-elect could check the issue of oil theft, that's, go, that's going to help. Number two, we keep talking about, uh, uh, you know, removal of oil subsidy and all the rest of it. But I think what we should concentrate on more is operationalizing our refineries and ensuring that it is functioning optimally and maximally. Because when you have your refineries functioning, you don't need to subsidize anyone. You don't, I mean, you only subsidize something that you import. But why will you import what you already have in your own nation? I mean, we shouldn't be talking about oil issues like nations that do not have it. Nations that have it they develop the capacities and capabilities 
to refine their oil, even make money from all other diversified chain that is associated with the crude oil, and then go further in selling the refined version which give more money. I mean, in a recent research, it was discovered Nigeria loses hundreds of dollars in just one barrel of crude oil for, for, for selling the, the, the raw material and not the refined one. Mm. Well, that's just a tax before um, I heard the president elect. I wonder, you know, how the, the state gov government have, have their work cut out for them. And um, we'll see how, you know, all of this, the response to all of this in the coming days as we prepare for the inauguration. Thank you so much for talking to us. The um, chairman, Lit Network, the market. Two other stories following the arrival 